All right, we are doing the rear diff um, using AMSOIL 75W140 for severe towing. On my 234,000 ish mile of 50, uh, last time I did it, maybe 110,000 miles with uh, Royal Purple, same weight. Um, both of these have the additives for limited slip. It doesn't have a limited slip, it's an electronic diff, but still not gonna hurt anything. Um, so I have three parts of this. Uh, first step for me is to take out the spare tire because the spare tire sits right up against the diff and it's easier to clean out and whatnot without it there. So I'm going to just drop the spare real quick and then I'm going to back into the garage since I'm going to let it set overnight before I refill it. Um, and yeah, we'll go from there. All right. So these are what I'm going to use. Um, blue towels to clean it all out brake parts cleaner, um, something to drain the oil in. You need a 3 8 inch to get the fill out, and then you have to use a half inch socket to get the differential cover off. Um, this is to scrape off the old um, gasket, and then we have oil, gear oil gasket maker. Um, this is what I used last time, it seemed to work really well. A screwdriver just in case we need to pry anything off. Um, that's about it. Um, I'm going to start by trying to get the fill off first. And then <clears throat> that's just to make sure that I can put new fluid in it once I drain it. Um, the other one is that I think on the threads, on the fill hole, I also used gasket maker. Liquid gasket maker. Uh, so thread sealant here. So I'll put that on that as well. So that's basically what you'll need to do this. Um, and then, like I said, the three quarts of gear oil. On the driver's side is where your fill is. So you just take your 3 8 inch, and you can use an extension, it might be a little bit easier. But if you use a 3 8 flip that the right way. And break it loose, make sure that you can get it out, which is good, it's a good sign. Uh, and then we're gonna flip around to the back side. So, I mean, you expect some metal. Oops, you expect some metal in there, so hopefully it's not too bad. Um, but yeah, so before that weaves too bad, I'm gonna get the new, I'll get the bucket down here. Okay, so on this side, only thing that you kind of have to notate is where these ones are, because they have a stud on the back and these plastic clips clip onto them for the ABS sensors and so just you know make sure that you remember where these ones are and then I always place these when I take them out in a in the same pattern on the ground um, and then also always leave this one to last back it out most of the way crack this open let it drain and then you can pull the last one off otherwise you'll just have a mess um, but yeah so then now just And the other thing is, so on this in particular, you can see where I put the silicone last time. Now it's sticking out, so I really put it on there good. Did not leak at all, so that's nice. Um, as you saw, it was already coming out the weep hole. Um, so none of it came out, so that's good. This concerns me a little bit. I have to figure out what's going on there. But yeah, so now I'm just going to remove these the rest of the way. Kind of, like I said, set the ones that are like kind together, set them in the best kind of order that you can remember, just in case one of them happens to be longer, that you'll be able to remember where it goes. Um, yeah, and then the other thing is that with the gasket maker, it takes, you're supposed to let it set for an hour before you, uh, Uh, squeeze the parts together before you fully torque them. Uh, I don't believe I did that completely last time either, but I don't think I'm in a rush now. Okay, so now we're gonna take our screwdriver. Okay, so if I finally broke that open. Found a spot right here. Um, finally had enough room. Just let that crack open. We come out, kind of look, 
see what you see make sure there's not large chunks not a ton of shiny this doesn't look terrible um, it's not like milk shaking or something um, and then you know once we get in there we, we can see a little more in depth and detailed and make sure there's nothing weird going on I didn't have a wine or anything but this is just more of a preventive maintenance um, hoping that this diff continues to just work and not give me any trouble. Um, Ford has their recommended interval, which is 150,000 miles, which happens to also be the lifetime of the vehicle in their eyes. So I wouldn't go off their recommendation. Some people do these at like 50, 60,000 miles. Like I said, this is just a royal purple at a, about 100,000, 110,000 on it, and it doesn't look all that bad. It smells, but it's not burnt, so. Um, you know, I tow every now and then. I don't have a trailer anymore, so I haven't towed a lot. I drive extremely fast though, so it's definitely, definitely used. So, um, yeah, so I'm just gonna finish this off, take this diff off the rest of the way, and then um, I'm going to scrape off the gasket off of this first. I'll show you what that should look like, and then I'll apply the gasket for like 10, 15 minutes while I go and clean out the inside of this diff and clean the main surface, and then from there I'll start putting it back together. Okay, so here's the diff cover. Um, looks like the gasket maker actually stuck to the other side for the most part. Um, but anyways, I'm gonna take this. You can use a normal razor blade, you can use I guess a wire brush or something, just be careful not to take out too much metal or anything crazy, and then just scrape it off. I'm gonna use some brake clean just to get out, you know, any the rest of the oil. You can kind of see here what it should look like once you take out all this stuff. Okay, so here's the after. Um, so for this particular gasket maker, um, it's extremely hard to squeeze out, but you're just gonna make a bead basically from, you know, start somewhere. I'm gonna start at the top of the diff just because if there's ever a seam or something, I feel like the top's a much better place to have it. Um, and you're gonna come in from here, go around, back up, and then just go all the way around. Um, make it, you know, 3 sixteenths of an inch to a quarter inch thick. And then I'm going to let it set here for 10 minutes while I clean out the diff and then I'm going to go hang it back up um, Press it on without moving it too much and then um, It says wait an hour before we torque it down Maybe 30 minutes is what I'm going to wait and then I'm going to clean up and then tomorrow I'll um, go and fill the diff back. Okay, so I end up starting here. You can see it put down a nice, you know, bead there um, problem um, my old tube got clogged up right about there and then I had to just figure it out the rest of the way um, I tried pulling out a can of my old ultra black that is air canister that no longer works either so I went back to stabbing it with a screwdriver and just trying to put down the bead the best I could um, so I need to clean up a little bit here so basically what I'm saying is don't do this unless you have a brand new tube I mean Honestly, what do they cost? Like $7? Definitely should have done that. Um, but yeah, so now I'm gonna let this set. And I'll show you the diff. All right, so here it is. You can see the gasket seal just kind of hanging around. Get that completely off. It smells decently bad, but not terrible. Um, so we're gonna look in there. That was a little bit concerning. Looks a little bit shiny. <clears throat> yeah, that looks a little bit shiny in there. Um, okay. So I'm gonna clean up the seal, wipe around down here, just kind of see if I can get the rest of that out. So that doesn't look bad. The pooling part here doesn't look bad. Sometimes you can get it to start to come out. 
can make the foil follow it along here. So here is a 2013 F-150 rear diff with 234,000 miles. You can kind of see the teeth and the wear on there. Um, on the, this one there isn't too much. But yeah, you can definitely see them on the, those ones, but not bad. Um, there appears to be some shininess back there, but overall it doesn't look too bad. Okay, got that all cleaned off. Um, my tech tip, put a towel over the top of this. Just kind of hang it there or a trash bag or something so that way you don't get stuff like this in your you know, carrier and whatnot um, that you're actually trying to clean out. Um, yeah, so then I'm just going to throw the... Okay, and so now... We're gonna put in the long studs first oh, with where they should go for this. So, and we're just gonna go ahead and tighten everything. This one goes here. And then this one goes here. And the breasts are all the same. Now we're going to turn all sparky hair down to one. And we're going to put them in, not out. And in a star pattern. So now it says to leave it like this for an hour. Um, I am going to crawl out of here, clean up the oil, um, clean off this. I'm just going to wipe off that excess metal. Alright, so I'm going to put the thread sealer on this. I just sprayed this off a little bit more, wiped it all down, get everything off. Make sure it's nice and dry. Uh, make sure you shake this up. And then you just put a little bit on. You just need to be like a thread off from the end. Kind of just put some all the way around it. Kind of hard to do with one hand. And I'm just going to smear it around, and then that's about it. Um, then I'm going to fill the diff up, and then let this set for a little bit while I do that, and then torque it all up. Okay. So here it is. Got the little tube off, and then fill it up. I should probably put down some. I'm going to put down some towels first, and then. In the hole and fill it up. Um, I'm not gonna film that. So now it's time for the plug back in. I sprayed it off and wiped it all down so hopefully there's no more remaining oil so you can kind of tell if it's leaking or not. Um, I put in the first quart, you know, got up to um, grab some stuff so it didn't look like it's leaking. Um, but yeah, then just make sure that whatever you have underneath is nice and clean so you can kind of tell if for some reason it starts to leak. Well, yeah, that's about it.